So here's the deal. I'm sick, my wife is sick, our kids are sick, so in order to stay on schedule with these videos, I'm going to have to do things a little differently with this one. So today we're going to do something I'll call the photo breakdown. We'll take a look at a handful of images and go over everything from the thought process, to the gear, to the exposure, to the final thoughts. But first I'm going to take a second to thank today's sponsor, which is Squarespace. If you're a photographer, you need a website, and Squarespace is the best all-in-one platform out there. They have all kinds of templates that make it super easy to make a great looking website. And if you want to try out a free trial, you can do so at squarespace.com. But if you do want to get signed up, I can save you 10% off if you sign up at squarespace.com slash mattday. So for this episode, we're going to look at a few images that I shot of my friend Brad. Brad is a barista at Roast Coffee, and we stayed late one evening after they closed so we could use the space to shoot some photos. We shot a handful of photos with the Fuji X-T3, but we wanted to get a few different looks, so we decided to shoot a few frames with the Holga as well. I love the Holga for its limitations and the distinct look that it has. If you've never used a Holga before, it's a plastic medium format camera. Even the lens is plastic, which is what gives it the character that it has. In terms of limitations, you've got f8 and f11. Though if you have an older model, it's really just f8 regardless of which setting it's on, but my model is a newer one made after 2009, so I'm spoiled with the two aperture settings. For your shutter speed, you can either use the fixed 1 100th of a second or bulb for a longer exposure. On top of that, you're zone focusing everything, so you're not actually looking through the lens. I wanted to stay up close as I usually like to for portraits, so I set it to the closest distance that it can focus, which is roughly one meter. In order to light these photos, I used a Light Gear Light Mat 2L, which was sent to me with another light mat by my friend Mike Vicencio. Thank you, Mike. These lights are incredible. If you guys want to see a review of these lights, definitely let me know. I'd be happy to do that if it's something you guys would enjoy. Given the exposure limitations, I decided to load up some Ilford Delta 3200. In medium format, this has to be my favorite black and white film. HP5 pushes extremely well and it can give you really clean results, but I honestly love Delta 3200 because of that more pronounced grain. My favorite look with this film is exposing it at 1600 and developing it for 3200. So I took my Sekonic L358, I set the ISO to 1600 with the bulb out, and I took a meter reading right in front of Brad's chin. I wanted the light fall off to be pretty quick, trying to further enhance that natural vignette that you get with this plastic lens, so the light mat was on a boom arm right above me and just a few feet from Brad. I added a layer of diffusion and a grid as well to help control the light. I just adjusted the power of the light until I got a reading of f8 and 1 1 25th of a second and then I started shooting. I shot several photos that I was pretty happy with. The fall off was exactly what I was looking for and in the center of this plastic lens it's surprisingly sharp while the corners and edges have that soft and fuzzy feel to them. This is also why I wanted to frame him right in the center of the majority of these shots. We tried some other looks as well, one of which was with more of a side lighting approach, looking for more shadow and texture on the wall. The walls aren't perfectly smooth so I positioned the light right against the wall on the side so that way it would catch any imperfections that were there. Delta 3200, especially in a scene like this where there are really deep shadows, it has this sort of graphite look to it, almost as if it were sketched with a pencil. I wanted to try some handheld shots using the bulb setting as well, and I knew they would be softer with some motion blur to them, but that's part of the fun with these kind of cameras, you're just shooting a bit more free and more willing to break the rules. However, I'm not really crazy about these photos. I don't mind the soft motion to them, but they lost so much of what I loved about the first photos, with the contrast, the sharpness, and really that grittiness of Delta 3200 and its grain. Now an interesting thing about the Holga is that it has a hot shoe on top of the camera, so you can even use an on-camera flash or mount a trigger for off-camera flash. That's definitely something we're going to explore more and experiment with, but that's for another day. So I hope you guys enjoyed this photo breakdown. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. And if you enjoyed it and want to see this become a regular series, definitely let me know. So thank you guys for everything, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.